Hello friends. Out of the many, many, many fascinating things that have happened in the world recently that I wish I could make videos on, but I can't even, my brain can't even process. I've been having like any overload. It's part of the reason I haven't been making videos is I just don't, I don't even know where to start and I'm just kind of dumbfounded all the time. I would like to talk about one fascinating event in particular. Last week or the week before, Vladimir Putin made the accession or statement that the United States is the only superpower. If you know anything about Putin, you know that he don't bow down easily. He doesn't make comments or statements like that, unless he has a motivation for doing so. I see no reason for him to come out and just make a statement like that, unless he was trying to openly flatter Donald Trump, and Donald Trump was doing the same for Putin. They've just been having this, like, you know, media love fest. That makes sense, right? This video isn't about that, however. I began a project before Vladimir made that comment. It just seemed to fall in line. I was wondering exactly what the statistics of the superpower are. How exactly does America measure up? How do we stack up against the rest of the developed world? If you would like to know exactly what it means to be the world's only superpower, you're in luck. I made this list from data from the United Nations Development Program under Human Development Reports. I ended up with 22, the top 22 most developed nations. I did about 22 countries because some of the countries were really tiny and kind of didn't seem to matter, but then I, I felt like they still, you know, they should get street cred. I'm not going to go over all the stats I have so far for the top 22, but I would like to point out just a few as we start this journey because I have so many more categories I would like to talk about, but I'm just going to start it today. And I know that means I've got like five series or more started that I... I'm in various degrees of finishing and stages. A lot of the information is from this website, also from worldbank.org, and I'll put my citations under the video, if not right away, at some point. These are the most developed nations on planet Earth. Number 22 on the list, France. 21 is Belgium. 20, Japan. 19, Luxembourg. 18, Israel. 17, South Korea. 16, Iceland, 15, the United Kingdom, 14, Sweden, 13, Liechtenstein, 12, Hong Kong, 11, Singapore, 10, New Zealand, 9, Canada, 8, the United States, 7, Ireland, 6, Germany, 5, the Netherlands, 4, Denmark, 3, Switzerland, 2, Australia, and number 1 in the world, the most developed country, is Norway. And the way they scored these were by what they call the Human Development Index. So Norway had a Human Development Index of 0.944. And it's taking things like GDP, per capita, uh, life expectancy, the population. If you are wondering what the GDP might look like for some of these countries, I, I will give you just a few of them so that you can see exactly how the United States stacks up. The GDP of Norway, since they're number one, is $499.8 billion. Here at the bottom, as far as the develop goes, is France. They have $2.829 trillion. The country with the lowest GDP Coming in at number 13 is Liechtenstein, which isn't really a surprise so because Liechtenstein is tiny. They have 5.5 billion as their gross domestic product. The top three for GDP, because three is always a good number, 
Germany coming in at number three for GDP, number six on our developed list, 3.868 trillion. Japan, 4.602 trillion, and they were number 20 on the list. And the big dog, the United States, 17.419 trillion. I did a little comparison here. Uh, so in 1990, the GDP for the United States was 5.98 trillion. Moving right along, uh, we're going to look at some per capita incomes. Again, Norway at number one on our list. They have a per capita income of $64,992. The lowest per capita using the GDP and the population and dividing it all up, this is how they get that number. So, of course, we know it's nothing really like this <laughs> for most people, but that's how they figure out these numbers. So, Israel is, it looks like the lowest here. Israel has a GDP of 30,676. The top three, Luxembourg at 58,711. Norway, which I've already said, 64,992. Singapore takes the prize for per capita income at $76,628. The heck are they doing in Singapore? The United States per capita income was $52,947. And if you're wondering about the UK, I know I've got some viewers from the UK, $39,267. So I thought it would be fascinating and helpful, especially in terms of GDP, to know the external debt of the most developed nations in the world. Norway, at number one on the list, has an external debt of $1.145 trillion. Their GDP was $499.8 billion. That might sound like a lot of money, but out of 22 nations, Norway is number 18 on the list. So that debt is pretty low. Now you know uh, what we're dealing with here as far as external government debt goes. The country with the least external debt, Liechtenstein, coming in at a big fat zero. So maybe we should all be moving there. The last country on our list, again, is France, whose GDP was $2.829 trillion. Their external debt is $5.7 Five trillion. That lands them at the number three spot. Number two, coming in at $9.59 trillion, is the United Kingdom. Their GDP is $2.989 trillion. Unless you've been living under a rock or you don't watch the news, and I totally understand if you don't. I didn't for a really long time, but suddenly I can't stop myself. I'm like checking my news ticker like morning, noon, and night. Then you know what's been going on in the, in the United Kingdom. On top of the Brexit vote, the GDP to debt ratio doesn't look so awesome at the moment. And then take into account the plummet of the pound. To my friends in the UK, I prayed for the United Kingdom. I prayed for the United States too. Because uh, I, I truly want the best for all these countries. Can anybody guess who has the largest external government debt? Anybody? Anybody want to take a guess? You guessed it. The United States has the largest external debt out of any of these developed nations. Coming in at number one with 19.188 trillion dollars. 19.2. 19.2 trillion dollars. How much do you think that is? If you had 19.2 one dollar bills, how... how big of a place do you think you would need to fill it up with all 19.2 trillion one dollar bills? I would like to know that. I would like to know if somebody can help me conceptualize how much money that is. Because I don't even really understand a million dollars. You know, so a billion is like, huh? I mean, I know Donald Trump owes like, probably like five billion. <laughs> or probably a lot more than that, honestly.
but I, I have no way to understand or conceptualize this. So if somebody can think of a great way for me to understand our national debt of $19.2 trillion, I would love, love to hear it. Once again, the United States is number eight for most developed nations. Not number one, even though we're the only superpower in the world, but number one for external debt. Moving right along to life expectancy. Now that we've got some of those dollar figures out of the way, Norway's life expectancy for adults, for adults, of course they're adults. My dog is out, hang on. Sasha, Sasha, be nice to the neighborhood. Back to our regularly scheduled programming. I would, I would be a horrible news anchor. Now back to life expectancy. Now that I have my little dog inside and she's not out like devouring the neighborhood, Norway. Our number one country, their life expectancy is 81.45 years. Pretty solid. Let's look at somebody we haven't looked at yet. Oh, how about Singapore? 84 years. Singapore wins too. They have the highest life expectancy. Right under Singapore is Luxembourg with 83.5 years. I just lied to you. Hong Kong has 84 years. They are number one. Number two is Luxembourg. Number three, Singapore with 83. So they're still doing pretty good. Are you wondering what the United States life expectancy is out of all these numbers in the 80s? Hmm, 79.1. That actually puts us lowest on this entire list. We'd be dying way earlier up in the U.S. CO2 emissions, I thought would be another good one to do. CO2 emissions are measured in metric tons, and I'm going to be giving you the metric tons per capita. The UK does much better than all of us so far. They come in at 7.1 million metric town pounds per capita. The people of Norway produce 9.2 million metric tons per capita. The people of Australia, 16.5 million metric tons of CO2. The United States, 17 million metric tons per capita. The highest on our list, Luxembourg, 20.9 million metric tons per capita. The lowest, Singapore, 4.3 million metric tons per capita. Good job, Singapore! And they have the highest per capita income too, so maybe we all need to be studying Singapore. Population is one of my indicators in my chart here, and I am going to pick a few, and I'm also going to tell you the homeless population at the same time. We're going to know a lot about Norway, aren't we? Norway has 5,136,886 people, and their hom homeless population is 6,259. Our least populous country, again, is Liechtenstein. Liechtenstein's population is 37,286. They did not have anything come up on their homeless population. I'll have to get back to you on Liechtenstein's homeless problem. Ever wonder how many Germans are in Germany? 80,970,732. And approximately 284,000 of those are homeless. The second most populous country on our most developed list is Japan. 127,131,800 people fit somehow in that tiny little space. Japan is doing a pretty good job with their homelessness, at least looking at some others here. Japan only has 25,000 homeless people. I mean, here's Germany with almost 81 million people, and they have 284,000. Japan has 127 million people, and they only have 25,000 homeless people. Huh. Way to go, Japan. That's great. We need to take a lesson there, because the United States Coming in at number one on the most populous country on our list, 318,857,056 Americans hanging out here, doing God knows what. Statistics in the United States can't seem to agree on how many homeless we have. It's somewhere from 610,000 to 2.5 million. Healthcare rank, the 
adequacy of our healthcare system. And this is from WHO, the World Health Organization. Last on our most developed list is first in healthcare. France comes in number one in the world, basically. Well, good job, France. I know you got some crazy stuff going on there, and it seems like the French are always depressed or something, but at least you've got some great healthcare going for you. There are not many single digit, as far as ranking, healthcare ranking goes on our list. The only other single digit is Singapore, coming in at number six on the healthcare rank. If you are wondering about Norway, who isn't? I'm Norwegian too, maybe I just need to go back to my motherland. Norway comes in at number 11. If you're wondering who is lowest, for once it's not the United States. It is South Korea, coming in at number 58. I wonder what they did to deserve that. On our list right above South Korea, New Zealand at number 41. And the third worst on our list, the United States at number 37. So even though the United States is the number eighth most developed nation in the world, we managed to only live to be 79.1 years. Perhaps this is due to our 37th ranked healthcare system. I'm sure we could ask some of our 610,000 2.5 million homeless people what they think about it. Education rank. Number one in education is not the United States. No. Number one in education is Singapore. Singapore is really kicking some major booty. Number two is Hong Kong. Hong Kong also has been doing really good in the numbers game here. Number three, South Korea. So South Korea has had some shitty healthcare, but their education is doing awesome. Number four, Japan. Okay, so those are our single digits, I think. Nope, Switzerland, number eight for education. The Netherlands, number nine for education. The United States comes in dead last out of the 22 countries on the most developed nations list for education. Even more startling is that in 1990, the United States was number one for education. Tuition per year for college students. And this will be my last one. If you would like to go to college in Norway, it is going to cost you a whopping $596 a year. Sweden, $600 a year. Germany, $933 a year. In Australia, it's going to cost you a bit more. $7,692 a year. In the UK, it's going to cost $5,288 a year. In the United States, it costs, on average, $13,856 a year. And our number was actually unique on this list uh, because our tuition is so much more varied than everywhere else in the world. So that number was derived from an average of public and private colleges. The public average was $7,173. The private average, 24700 Once again, the United States wins. We have the most expensive college tuition in the world. Although, for some reason, that expensive tuition is dead last on the list for education rank. Thank you for joining me as I dug through some of the statistics that make a superpower. I feel like Trump's already in charge, we just don't know it. <laughs> See you next time!